All right, guys, so we'll continue on here. We read six and seven last time, which talked about joining up with the family of Ishmael, and they came with uh, Nephi and his family into the wilderness, and they took the daughters of Ishmael to a wife, and now they will have their own families as they travel in the wilderness. Chapter 8, And it came to pass that we had gathered together all manner of seeds of every kind, both of grain of every kind, and also of the seeds of fruit of every kind. They wanted to bring some seeds and uh, plant them in the promised land if they could. Verse 2. And it came to pass that while my father tarried in the wilderness, he spake unto us, saying, Behold, I have dreamed a dream, in other words, I have seen a vision. And behold, because of the thing which I have seen, I have reason to rejoice in the Lord because of Nephi and also of Sam. For I have reason to suppose that they and also many of their seed will be saved. So behold, dreaming and then will I be exceedingly because of you. For behold, met God, me thought, I saw in my dream a dark and dreary. So what you guys about to describe this dream he had, and this is a very well-known dream from the Book of Mormon called the dream about what? The tree of the vision of the tree of life. So there was a dark and dreary wilderness, so it was really dark, he couldn't see that much in his dream. And it came to pass that I saw a man, and he was dressed in a white robe. And he came and stood before me. And it came to pass that he spake unto me, and bade me follow him. And it came to pass that as I followed him, I beheld myself that I was in a dark and dreary waste. And after I had traveled for the space of many hours in darkness, I began to pray unto the Lord that he would have the mercy on me, according to the multitude of his tender mercy. God um, mercy. Yeah, what is mercy? God doing something special for us. Yeah, it's a mercy. How was Lehi feeling as he wandered through this dark and dreary wasteland in his dream? He was scared. He was scared. So what did he do? Pray. He prayed to the Lord. Yeah. And the it Lord came. Will always look at him. Sometimes he lets us actually go through really hard things. He might support us, but he doesn't necessarily take We're it away. Going to make them go back to Jerusalem. But uh, prayer is the way to kind of access those tender mercies of the Lord. And it came to pass, after I had prayed unto the Lord, I beheld a large and spacious field. So its vision is changing from a dark and dreary wasteland to this large and spacious open field. After he prayed? Uh huh, after he prayed. And he came to pass, now I beheld a tree whose fruit was desirable to make the Lord happy. So what did you see? A tree. And what was uh, special about this fruit on the tree? That it would make the person happy. When they ate it, yeah. <coughs> Verse 11. And it came to pass that I did go forth and partake of the fruit thereof. And I beheld that it was most sweet above all that I ever before tasted. Yea, and I beheld that the fruit thereof was white to exceed all the whiteness that I had ever seen. Yeah, so what it was good fruit. Very good fruit, right? Sweeter than anything else, and exceeded all whiteness. Verse 12. And as I partook of the fruit thereof, I filled my soul with exceeding great joy. Wherefore I, wherefore I began to be desirous for my family should partake of it also. For I knew that it was desirable of all the others. Oh, they're a fruit. <laughs> so when he found out how good this fruit was and how much joy it gave him, what did he want to do? He wanted to go tell him to his family to, for them to taste it. Yeah, he wanted to share it with them. I mean, when you guys have something good, don't you want to share it? Because it's so good, you want to share it, right? Like, it's like a food or... Sometimes it's not fun. Right. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to share it. What do we want instead? Keep it to ourselves. Keep it to ourselves and kind of hoard it and say it's all mine. Is that the kind of person Lehi was? 
No. no. When he found this wonderful fruit that made him feel so good, did he want it all to himself? No. What did he want to do? Share it. Share it. And as I cast my eyes round about that perhaps I might discover my family also, I beheld a river of water. And it ran along and it was near the tree of which I was partaking the fruit. So he's looking for his family to share the fruit. But what does he see? A river of water. And it's kind of flowing along and it goes by the tree where he's standing. Verse 14. And I looked to behold from whence he came. And I saw the head thereof a little way off. <clears throat> and, at, and at the head thereof I beheld your mother Shariah and Sam and Nephi. And they stood as if they knew not whither they should go. So who did he see? His, um, his, his family. family. Most of his family. Most. Yeah, most of his family. Most of his family. And it came to pass that I beckoned unto them, and I also did say unto them with a loud voice, that they should come unto me and partake of the fruit which was desirable above all other fruits. Oh. They called them over. Thank you, thank you. Come on. Come here. Come on. That's right. That's what he said. Come on. What did, I didn't hear what he said. What did we, he said, come here, yeah. yeah. And why did we have want his family to come? Alexa? Because he wanted them to eat Jesus' fruit. That's right. He wanted them to eat Jesus' fruit. The fruits that make a person make happy. Verse 16. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, no. And it came to pass that they did come unto me and partake of the food also. So what they do? They ate it. But yeah, they... Lehi was calling tasty. them over, so they went over. Mm -hmm. It so, must have been tasty. Sounds like everything's pretty good so far. 17. And it came to pass that I was desirous that Laman and Lemuel should come and partake. I wonder how also. this will go. Mm. What a twilight went to a bad side. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Wherefore I cast mine eyes towards the head of the river that perhaps I might see them. So what's the guy doing? Looking for Laman and Looking for Laman and Lemuel. And it came to pass that I saw them, but they would not come to me and partake of the fruit. <gasps> what? What happened then? They didn't partake of the fruit. And I beheld a rod of iron, and it extended along the bank of the river, and led to the tree by which I stood. So we see him more in the vision. What's he seeing now? Oh my God. Hmm. Um, this is actually a good where, where did the rod run along, extend along? Evan or Haley? Anybody? I said the tree near a path. What does it say in the book? No, I said where... It said Along it the bank of the river. Oh, 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 the river, and it led to what? The tree. The tree. The side of the river. The side of the river. It went alongside the river. It's a beach. And so if you wanted to get to the tree, what should you hold on to? The iron rod. Because it'll take you what? To the, to, to the, the tree. To the tree, yeah. Verse 20. And I also beheld a straight and narrow path, which came along by the by the rod of iron, even the, uh, to the tree by which I stood. And I also led by the head of the fountain into a large and spacious field, as if it had been a world. So there, so what was the path you walked on if you were holding on to the iron rod? You guys were saying it earlier. Straight and narrow. <laughs> straight and narrow no, path. No, the <laughs> So you want to walk on the straight and narrow path and hold on okay. to the iron rod so you don't you do fall that, into the <laughs> and if you do Maybe that you eventually this. get to where the tree the tree i saw numberless concourses of people many of whom were pressing forward that they might obtain the path which led it to the tree by which i stood so we saw the field and what was in this big field uh, people a lot of people and what were some of them doing the iron rod. well they were going to the iron rod so they could what Get to the tree. Uh-huh, it's because they wanted to follow the iron rod to the tree. But let's see what happens. And it came to pass that he had come forth and commenced in the path which led to the tree. Let's see what happens to him. And it came to pass that there arose a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceedingly great mist of darkness, insomuch that they who had commenced in the path did lose their way, that they wandered off and were lost. Mm. So what happened? And they got scared, and what, and what did they let go of? 
Yeah, you're right. They let go, and then they started to wander off the straight and narrow path. And what happened once they got into the cloud of darkness? They fell to their doom. What does it say? They got lost. They got lost, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Kate says that Abby helped others pressing forward, and they came forth and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron. And they did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even though they did come forth and what they hated. Yeah, so some people let go of the iron rod and got lost in the mist of darkness, but, but others. When the mist of darkness came, what did they do? They held on the iron rod. And does it say they held on not really soft and gently? No. What's the word it uses? Super tight. Super tight. Clinging. They Clinging. were clinging to the iron rod. They got scared of it. <laughs> so when they got scared of all that darkness, instead of getting away from the path, what were they doing? Holding on tight. They were that's white knuckling. I, that's like that that like iron that's rod. like me on roller. Oh my god! Alright. Um, I'm sure it was a pretty scary experience for them, but instead of getting scared and wandering off, they got scared and what? Went the right way. Held on tight. They were clinging. They went the right way. 25. And after they had partaken of the fruit of the tree, they did cast their eyes about as if they were ashamed. Hmm. That's weird. So they. Grab the iron rod, they make it through this mist of darkness, they finally get to the tree and enjoy this delicious fruit. Yeah, you yeah. think they'd have a big happy smile yeah. on their face. Yeah, yeah, me, just me. But how did they feel they, after they made it to the tree and partook of the, the, the shame. delicious fruit? They felt ashamed. Let's find out why why would they feel that way? 26. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but then they started looking around, so let's see why they yeah, started looking maybe around. Maybe they saw something after they got to the tree and they were looking around. 26 with their wandering eyes. They maybe saw something. Well, Evan's going to read it. 26. 26. <laughs> just listen, just listen. <laughs> and I have also cast my eyes around about to be held on the other side of the river of water, a great and spacious building, and it stood as it were in the air, high above the earth. Mm, so. Lehi sees these people with this ashamed look on their face who are looking around, so he starts looking around and what does he see? A building. A building? That's like floating in the air. Floating in the air. And was this a really small building? No, no. a giant building. It was a giant building. Well, we'll see, we'll get to that part. <laughs> what is it on a giant but, cloud? Well, in order for a building to just be firm and stable in case there's an earthquake or just to stay strong and, and stay stable, would, and what does a building just, have to be built on? A platform. Uh, you guys know what that ground or platform is called underneath the building? Foundation. What's it called? A foundation. A foundation. And as long as the foundation is strong, what does that help the building do? Stand up. Stand up strong and firm and it, so it won't fall down, but it has to have a strong what? Foundation. Foundation. But this Daddy, building was what? Floating. It was floating in the air. So what did it not have? A firm foundation. It didn't have a firm foundation. Daddy. Oh no. Well, let's see what happens to this building without that foundation that's floating in the air. 27. And it was filled with people, both old and young, both male and female, and their manner of dress was exceedingly fine. And they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers towards those who had come at and were partaking of the fruit. What happened? People were mocking them. What people? The people in the building. Were mocking who? The people who partake of the fruit. Right. So, you, and how did these people in the great and spacious building look? Scared. No. No. So, if I said they. Their clothing was exceedingly fine, so they looked fine. Right, they fancy. had really fancy clothes, probably looked like they had a lot of money. glamorous money, and they're in this great spacious building, and they're laughing and they're mocking. The people who are partaking of the fruit. The people who are partaking of the fruit. They're rude. And I think we're starting to get an idea why some of the people who were partaking of the fruit were starting to feel what? Shame. It was because of who? Yeah. Because of people in that great and spacious building, huh? 
So let's see what happens when to these people who are partaking of the fruit of the tree. And after they had tasted of the food, they were ashamed because of those who were scoffing at them, and they fell away into the forbidden paths and were lost. So what happened to the people who ate the fruit? Yeah, they were yeah. ashamed and got lost. Yeah. Were they trying? I I think they were trying to get to the building. They were probably trying to get to the building, but they left the straight and narrow path. They left the iron rod and the tree. going to the building, what happened? They were lost. They were lost. And now I, Nephi, do not speak all the words of my father, right? Adam. Oh, <laughs> but to be short in hiding, people who saw other multitudes pressing forward, the king caught forward of the end of the bright iron. They did press their way forward, continually holding fast to the rod of iron, till they came forth and fell down and partook of the fruit of the tree. So we saw some people who got ashamed and wandered off and were lost. But he saw others who what? Were still coming. Mm -hmm. And it says they came and caught hold of the rod of iron, and they did what? Kept pressing forward. And every now and then they'd let go and just kind of take a break from the iron rod, right? Mm -hmm. No. No. And every now and then they would just let go and take a little break from this iron rod, right? No. no. What does it say here? What's the word? They. They yeah, were the what? Still on. What's the word it uses? Alyssa got it. They were what? Still holding on. Verse thirty. Continually yeah. holding fast to the iron rod. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like... yeah. Uh, continually holding fast. <laughs> to the iron rod. Were they ever letting this thing go? No. No, they weren't. Until they came forth, and what does it say? What did they do when they finally came? And partook of the fruit. No, before then, what did they do? They fell down. They fell down. And why did they fall down? They were happy. Because they were happy, and why else? They were filled with the spirit. Were they pretty tired? Yes. Was this easy? No. No. Yeah, they were filled with love. They were filled with love, right? But they were probably pretty tired when they finally made it. Yeah, that was so hard. Really hard there's like this really strong relief that you feel at the end, and kind of holding on to the I iron see. rod isn't always easy. And they were holding on tight, going through a lot of stuff to get there. And when they did, it was just that. But that you know, that really that that but that is that And he also saw other multitudes feeling their way towards the great and spacious building. So there was more people going where? To this building. To the great and spacious building. Terrible building. We didn't even have a foundation. 32, Haley. <laughs> And it came to pass that many were drowned in the depths of the fountain, and many were lost from the field, wandering in strange fields. What does it mean, drowned? Drowned. Drowned. Yeah, they, they, because uh, what was running along the path? A river. A river. So as people were walking through the mist of darkness, some of them what? Fell into the river, and what happened? They drowned. They drowned in the river and died in this, in this vision that we had, right? Um, and well, others went off in other directions and were just what? Lost. Lost, right? And great was the multitude that did enter into that strange building. And after they did enter into that building, they did point the finger of scorn at me. And those that were partaking of the fruit also, but we heeded them not. So the other people just didn't want to so Nephi and Lehi and all those who had continuously held steadfast to the iron rod were the people mocking them, yeah. kind of making fun of them. Hey, you guys are silly. Get away from that. They come do what we're doing. But what did Nephi and those who were holding fast? They just like ignored them. Yeah, we heeded nope. them not. Yeah, that was they just like really whatever. Straight. Yeah. Daddy, this could have been them. Whatever. I love that phrase. Like, I'm like, who cares about that, Bunny? I'm going to a float. <laughs> That's right. We, <laughs> we heated them. Ah, I like that.
These are the words of my father, for as many as heeded them had fallen away. And Laman and Lemuel partook not of the fruit, said my father. And it came to pass after my father had spoken all the words of his dream, or vision, which were many, he said unto us, Because of these things which he saw in a vision, he had exceedingly feared the Laman and Lemuel. Yea, he feared them. Thus they should be cast off from the presence of the Lord. So was he really worried about Laman and Lemuel and whether or not they were going to be righteous? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 37. And he did exhort them, and he did exhort them then with all the feeling of a tender parent, that they would hearken to his words, that perhaps the Lord would be merciful to them and not cast them off. Yea, my father did preach unto them. Does preach mean like Taught them to the gospel in the hopes that they would follow and be faithful. Verse 38. And after he had preached unto them and also prophesied unto them of many things, he bade them to keep the commandments of the Lord, and he did cease speaking unto them. So what did he tell them to do? Follow the commandments. So what are some things you guys learned from this vision? Uh, that Lehi had about the tree of life. Don't pull a tiger and rod. rod and just go until it's done. But what is the iron rod for us? Yeah, what do you guys think? What does that mean to hold to the iron rod? Keep reading the scripture. Okay. Keep yeah. going to the to the commandments. And what, how about you, Alyssa? What do you learn from the vision of the tree of life? To what? Follow the commandments. Follow the commandments. Very nice, guys. Now, are there going to be, is it always easy to keep the commandments? No. Is it, do we, it does often feel kind of confusing, and do we sometimes not know what we should do? Yeah. All right. Does it feel like kind of that mist of darkness? Oh, what should we do during those times? Is it cold? Which is hold tight to the gospel, is and that will help us figure out those confusing times. A G -G -G. Mm -hmm. Subscribe button, turn on notifications.